And also people with dissociative identity disorder, which is known as, as multiple personalities, which it's, that is fascinating because the mind compartmentalizes into many minds, like, you know, a pill box, when you have a pill box that's Monday to Sunday and you put a pill in each one, it's like the mind puts a way of being in each uh, in each uh, personality and it's divided by a wall. And really it's very hard to bring down the wall between one personality and another in a, in a multiple personality disorder because it's a defense mechanism. Like the one I talked about where I forgot about the date of my father's death and, and, uh, and the exact form of cancer, it's a defense mechanism. The mind's incredible at using these defense mechanisms to help us live better so that we don't suffer, right? So I was trying to reintegrate the personality of one of my clients into one. Uh, and I had done that already, but this time I had a client with diabetes. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sam Dever Podcast, episode 108. In this episode, I speak with Carolina Sevilla. Carolina is the founder and CEO of Mentality Inc., and we had a phenomenal conversation tonight. I cannot wait for you to check it out. To watch this podcast, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at the Sam Dever Podcast. To listen to the podcast, be sure to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Here's my conversation with Carolina. Carolina Sevilla, welcome to the Sam Dever podcast. Thank you so much, Sam. This has been a long awaited uh, moment. So thank you for having me. A lot of people suggested you come on <laughs> before wow. I even met you. So wow. then I met you and we had a conversation. Soon I started talking to you about, oh yeah, like we got to do a podcast. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I, I hope whatever they told you about me was, a, was good. It right? was great things. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I hope so. That's a relief. That's a, that's a good start. So, well, I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, it's going to be a very interesting conversation because we've, we've talked about so much outside of the of this moment that I, I can't wait to continue. Oh. So tell me uh, what what you want to know, what you're interested <laughs> in. Well, since we don't have 12 hours, I'm just going to have, this will have to be just part one. <laughs> part one of many. Yes. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for sending me all the information you did. And I had a chance to hear uh, about your company at a networking event. And then uh, I heard you talk the other night and it's very clear you have a wealth of knowledge, especially in the realm of the human mind and how it works. So I think maybe to start this conversation out, could you tell us just a little bit about your background and maybe what led you to this point? Now? Sure, sure. And thank you, Sam, for looking over all that, for taking the time. Um, for your interest. Um, so this, this journey um, began early on when I was 18. Um, and I, uh, I had a, a story, a life story that was very uh, intertwined with, um, with illness, not, not my own, but my dad's. Um, so when I was born, um, my a year after I was born, my dad got a cancer um, that was a part of a, a syndrome that uh, that is very rare, but it gives people tumors in many different parts of the body. So first of all, he had a brain tumor and they took out a lot of his pituitary gland. Um, and then later on in my life, he had other forms of cancer, but I always, uh, I didn't, ever know how long my dad was going to live. So I lived with the idea of death by my side um, since I was born, which was um, actually a great, a great uh, teacher because it, it really um, teaches you not to 
not to take the things in life that aren't important um, too seriously, because you know that that life is so uh, ephemeral. Um, is that how you say it in English? Um, yeah, it sounded good. It, yeah. okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Yes, okay. yeah, it sounds well, good. Life goes by like we never know how, how long we're here. So um, anyway, when, when my dad, when I was about um, 18, um, I came, I think it was 18, my goodness. I, I came to the U.S. to to study university. And that first semester, my dad got very ill. He, he had... Um, uh, pancreatic cancer, and it went to his uh, bones, and if I'm not mistaken, also his lungs. It's interesting how we forget a lot about these things. It's like the mind. The mind has these defense mechanisms, and one of them is amnesia. And I, I, I really can't remember exactly what types of cancer he had, and I can't remember the day that he passed away. Still. Um, so anyway, I, I, I learned about defense mechanisms early on. And um, when, when he had this serious form of cancer, I went back to my home country, Ecuador, from here to be with him. And I, I told him that I wanted to be by his side uh, because I knew he was going to pass away. So to cut the story short, he just... Uh, asked me to do something that I loved. He was a very loving human being. And um, I said, I, I would love to learn to dance. So he looked for classes and found some tango lessons in the newspaper in that um, time and asked me if I wanted to learn that. And I, I said, sure. So I did and loved it. And one day my dad said, Caroline, I, I want to, I'm ready to go. It's my time. But I would love to see what you what you're so passionate about, which is the tango. So could you show me what this is all about so that I can die? Right. Basically, he, he was ready. And so I called a friend um, over and uh, it was actually a boyfriend at the time. And I would dance with him. And I said, we have to dance for my dad because he's ready to, he's waiting for that to be able to leave. And when we danced, um, something incredible happened, which was the, the beginning of this entire journey of the mind. And it was that, um, well, bone cancer is very painful. And my father uh, took morphine for the pain and it didn't go away with morphine. But while I was dancing tango with my boyfriend at the time, my dad was uh, not complaining at all about pain. And he was in a very elevated state and smiling. It was as if a channel in his mind had switched and his whole uh, physiology was completely different. And, and he was just very... Um, enlivened and his state was very heightened. So I danced three tangos and I was shocked at how different his state was when he was immersed in, interested in what was going on and, and enveloped by the music. So the whole um, illness, um, the, the whole last part of my dad's illness, he would play classical music and that would also relieve him. So I saw that that art relieved his pain, that it was it put him in a kind of trance. And that night, uh, a lady who was from the U.S., um, a, a friend of my mother's, came to the house, and she she came into the room and said to my dad that she was going to do something to help him. I didn't know what it was, but. Apparently, it had been a hypnosis. Um, I knew later on that it had been a hypnosis. I, I just thought it was a meditation. And for the second time, during the time that lasted, I saw my dad with no pain at all and with a huge smile. So I thought, wow, th this is real magic. You know, I, I've seen magicians do magic, but this is the real 
with you. So I was fascinated and um, so grateful to this lady. So we talked with my dad the entire night, and he was just in a different channel again, and his body was working so much better than any previous day or week or month. And um, so that, that left an impression in my mind. And um, the next day, my dad passed away, but it was such a beautiful moment that we shared, thanks to these two uh, instances that it left me thinking, like, what if my dad had been in those states longer than just that hour and those three tangos? You know, would that have changed his health and the quality of his life? So to cut the story short, I, I, I um, studied psychology looking to see if I could find what happened there. But, but unfortunately, I, I could not. I didn't find it in, ac in academia. So when I graduated, um, and I studied art because I was always very interested and loved painting. Um, but when I, I left the university, I wanted to find out what had happened. So took out loans with a huge interest rate. It was almost half a million dollars in loans with 37% interest rate in, in Latin America, which is huge. And it was a, a wonderful thing because it's what sparked my career, <laughs> having to pay that back. So, but I took those loans to go and find what had happened to my dad. So I went all over um, to all the alternative uh, methods that have to do with the mind also to the Amazon rainforest to understand natural healing from shamans. And I worked with people in different, um, like monks and, 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 and uh, just uh, different cultures that work with the mind. Um, so I found hypnosis and, um, and thought, wow, this is what they did with, with my dad. I, I run across it. So I studied it learned it um, very well and, and learned neuro-linguistic programming. And then I had to pay back those loans. So I spent my time teaching this for many years. And uh, I'd see clients from Monday to Friday. And then the weekend, I'd give these trainings. Um, and that's where something incredible happened that led to the next systems that you know about. But that's the story of how we got there. Wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And you're right, yeah. No, half a million dollars, that's a good, that's a good motivator, right? Like <laughs> it's a to, good motivator. To go get to work. Right. For action, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing everything about your father and what you learned with that. And so what what happened? What was the thing next that sparked mm. for you? Well, because I gave so many trainings, because I had to pay back uh, that big amount, um, I, I just did it every weekend. And one of the activities we would do in the trainings was I, I would do a stage show, a hypnotic stage show. And there's a very common um, exercise that, that hypnotists do, which is to call uh, you know, the, the participants from the public and have them become a different character. So you hypnotize the person to become a music, like whoever they, they respect or like from history. So maybe a musician like Beethoven or an artist like Dali or Gandhi or whoever they want to be or Buddha. And the, the exercise is that they will think and act like that person under hypnosis. So I did that a lot. And when I did that, every single time I did that exercise, one or several people would come up to me and say, Carolina, when I was that character, let's say Beethoven, I went to play the piano and my arthritic pain wasn't there or I was able to take out off my glasses and paint like that, like a painting because I was supposed to be Dali. 
but I could read. So, you know, this became like clinically relevant um, because it wasn't just a one-off. It was every single time I was doing these shows. It was at least one person told me that, you know, in a two-week period. So it was a lot of, of, of instances. And I thought, huh, it seems that when our mind changes channel, the body is changing immediately. It doesn't have to take like a month to change, but the person is actually reading the newspaper without glasses or a magazine or a book in a second, or a person is stronger, or their back doesn't hurt, um, or their headache goes away. So then um, that was one of the the, the magical things that happened with hypnosis. And then um, I was interested in understanding uh, everything I could about the mind. So I took on a lot of the hardest cases. I, I wanted to, to work with the most severe cases of um, mental disorders, let's call them that. And so I was working with schizophrenics and um, people with catatonias, which is when somebody becomes a vegetable, like they, they, they stop, stop being able to, um, to move from a shock. And um, and also people with dissociative identity disorder, which is known as as multiple personalities, which it's that is fascinating because the mind compartmentalizes into many minds, like you know a pill box when you have a pill mm-hmm. box that's Monday to Sunday and you put a pill in each one, it's like the mind puts a way of being in each. Uh, in each uh, personality, and it's divided by a wall as big as the Trump wall, (laughs) as Trump wants the the Mexican (laughs) wall to be, right? The the way it should, he wants it to be, that you cannot bring it down. And really, it's very hard to bring down the wall between one personality and another in a in a multiple personality disorder because it's a defense mechanism like the one i talked about where i forgot about the date of my father's death and and uh and the exact form of cancer it's a defense mechanism the mind's incredible at using these defense mechanisms to help us live better so that we don't suffer right? So I was trying to reintegrate the personality of one of my clients into one. Uh, And I had done that already, but this time I had a client with diabetes, with a a strong form of diabetes. And he was uh, from a very humble um, uh, background. His, His family didn't have any resources, and uh, they'd come a very long way for the therapy. And um, I was doing it as social work for them. I was doing it without any cost. And um, so I asked them if they would allow me to try and reintegrate his mind, leaving out the, the diabetes for one reason, and it was that uh, when he went from one personality to another, one day he went into, the, he was 45 and he became a two-year-old infant when, when an uncle of his came into the room. And he became very playful and, and flexible in his personality, like a two-year-old child. So started throwing things and happy one moment and not in another. So Two-year-olds are bipolar. <laughs> they're happy one moment and they're very moody another, right? And and but and he wanted a cookie and the mom uh, gave him the cookie. It was a very big chocolate chip cookie. So usually he would, when he ate sugar, I could tell because I calibrate, I measure the the physiology of my clients because the the unconscious mind is in our micro movements and our physiology. You know, if, if you say, if you ask me if I love dogs, I'll tell you, oh, gosh, I have this dog that is my heart, right? 
um, you can see in my face, like maybe my I'm I'm more relaxed when I tell you that. And if you tell me, do you like spiders? I'm like, oh, no, I never have a spider. It's a pet. I, I I show it. It's my my face is very different in both. So I calibrate my clients, and he calibrating him um, that day when he ate the cookie. I I realized he didn't turn reddish like he did when he ate sugar. He he turned kind of reddish and a little sweaty. His pupils would dilate. That was his uh, physiology when he ate sugar. Not that everybody has the same, but I noticed that nothing happened in that personality. So I asked the mother if she could measure his glucose with the glucose pick that they carry around and the glucose didn't go up with the cookie. So to shorten the story, this client, uh, this client's glucose only went up in seven of 65 personalities. And I thought, you know, I can't be the first therapist or uh, person in some form of the health uh, profession that has realized that somebody with multiple personalities has different symptoms depending on the personality. It can't be a one-off. It's impossible. So I started to investigate and 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 there were many cases. There's there's a documentary that the BBC did, I believe it was the BBC, about a lady that's blind and she has multiple personalities, but she can actually read in one of them. Um, it's I'll have to look up. I, I have that documentary somewhere, and it was a, a one that was on television. So um, I thought, wow, this is similar to what happened in the hypnotic shows, where when the mind switches channel, the body's changing instantly. So the wonderful thing about the work with uh, this incredible client that was taught me so much about life and the mind and our capacities um, because he was like a superhuman um, because of this defense mechanism. He had talents in some personalities that he didn't have in others. So in some, he was great at literature. In others, he was terrible. In one, he was sporty. In others, he was sedentary. He even had a female personality. And in that he complained because he he complained of menstrual cramps and he had a beautiful voice, singing voice in that personality. And all the others, his singing voice wasn't good. So I thought, wow, talents, symptoms uh, come and go depending on the channel of the mind that this this incredible human being is in. So I thought if this happens as a defense mechanism, we could train ourselves to do that because the mind has this capacity. So I spent many years um, looking at how to do that and understanding what is in the mind because the mind is invisible. So so, um, it hasn't had very clear definitions in the past. So I developed a a system called the Neural Remodeling System, which basically um, gives a definition of what the mind is and how a mind is structured. Because I learned uh, through all this work that I, it it was, um, well, now it's 23 years of of clinical work. Um, At that time, it was around... uh, 23, it was around 13 years of clinical work when I I, I started writing about this. Um, You know, I I learned how to decompose and recompose a mind and how to see its composition, what it's actually made of. So that became this system, the neural remodeling system um, that now is is uh, has is being translated into an app so that you can, you know, you don't have to go to a boring therapist <laughs> because we we can be pretty boring. I mean, 
well, not that we can be boring. Humans are wonderful. I'm, 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 I'm saying it as a joke. It's just, you know, it's expensive to go to a therapist. So I always thought that health should not be that expensive. And we, we need a, we need a therapist consistently because life is hard. Life is hard. So, you know, insurance companies only cover a certain amount of sessions and um, it's not enough to work on the entire mind. So I wanted to give that, um, that uh, availability to the public so they could work with their own mind self-sufficiently. And that's what this app that I'm developing now allows a person to do. Okay, I have yeah. 20 million questions. Okay, so, so, gonna, <laughs> so make sure. shoot. <laughs> um, and the app, is the app called Safi? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. It's, it's called Safi. Safi means wisdom in Greek. Okay, yeah. And when... When I was going through the literature you had sent me, you, you brought up that point of how, you know, pharmaceutical drugs people may take that may not be good for them, and those can be expensive, and then therapy can be expensive. And I thought you made a really good point about therapy. You can't cram everything into a 50 to an hour session. <laughs> like the mind, it's a lot more complicated than that. So right. that was a real eye opener to what you're doing. So I'm like, oh yeah, that does make sense. And you were saying how you can't remember everything that happened in a week and bring it in yeah. to that session. So if you could, so I, I wanna make sure I'm understanding it correctly. So with the app, you're basically logging yourself. Like you're logging if, I don't know, you get upset at something. You're In that moment, you're gonna get on the app and say, okay, I just got upset because this happened and then, Maybe later that day. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy this happened. It's, you're just basically having awareness of yourself and then logging all that. Right. That's yeah. part of it. Part that of is it. a yeah. part of it. Yeah. And then from there, the app is coming up with like a map of your mind, if you will. Or could you go a little more in depth to what happens yeah, next? I, <laughs> I might have to kill you if I tell you too much. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just because, well, a part of it, it's still a bit of, uh, uh, we, we haven't published it uh, fully uh, because it's a patent that we're, uh, sure. so, so we, we kept it a little bit as a, as a business secret for now. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm saying um, that all the info hasn't been um, revealed, but um, to give you, you know, a, a, a good idea of, of what it does, it, it starts um, taking in info of everything that, that happens that, if, that affects your mind and structures it. So, you know, this conversation that we're having will already change your perspective on life and mine. Um, what you say affects me, what I say affects you. So our mind is in constant construction from external elements, from our own internal uh, ways of processing. Like I, I, right now there's a plane going by and I could put my attention on the sound of the plane or on this beautiful painting. And depending where I put my attention, I'm affecting the mind. So there's a lot of internal things and external things that affect our minds, and the app is measuring that. So it gives us um, cognitive metrics. It shows us um, what's going on, stuff that is usually unconscious. And um, so, yeah, it'll, it'll provide a, a place for you to, uh, it'll showcase that. In, in a very clear, uh, straightforward manner so that you know uh, daily what's going on and it, and it helps you resolve any, any issue that you might be having because, um, you know, we, we have discomforts all the time. Like sometimes you might have a bad neighbor that plays loud music and that, that's already 
affecting our mental, emotional, physical state. So it doesn't have to be that we use the app because of a depression or, or, or a schizophrenia. It's just to optimize our states um, so that we are not in a state of stress, but we're in a, in a state of uh, just in, in those elevated, high functioning states. People call it a flow state very a lot and, and um, an alpha state, which it, the states that are free from stress. Um, and, and in those states, we are much more creative. Our cells work better. Our body is doing what it has to do to keep its health. Uh, because in, in the stress states, we're in fight or flight. So we're making a lot of certain things too little of others. And that's when disease happens. And, and chronic disease is when, in my opinion, is when those fight or flight states don't get turned off in time. So I, I propose that we have a very, uh, we, we, we are very resistant. We're very resilient. But there's, when we just spend too much time or it's or in those states or the intensity is too strong or the frequency is is just too much then we we suffer illness so yeah so the mind the the app takes uh will will with our, our patent pending technology allows you to download the content of the mind and and see it I can't tell you how that's done. <laughs> does that require? But you will see it in the app. Yeah. There, does that require mm -hmm. that the you know person using the app has to be self-aware enough of those things in order to you know put it in the app, or or can they just be you know let's say they don't have much experience with therapy and stuff like mm -hmm. can the average person utilize that without being you know. So, so that's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, no, the, the person doesn't have to know anything about the mind. It's very clearly, um, it's set up in, in, in a way that it's very easy to input the info. And, and actually, the phone does a lot of it for you. Also, oh, interesting. Um, because the phone has a lot of data also that um, about us and, and what we're uh, listening to, reading, bunch of things. So um, there's a part that you log in, and there's a part that it also gathers uh, for you. But but the the logging in is just for for instance, um, what books have you read throughout your life? What uh, movies have you watched? Uh, do you remember certain experiences that were that made you happy? Certain ones that made you. We have. I have a way that that is part of our system to collect that data in a very user friendly manner. So the person, yeah, do, doesn't have to know anything about the mind. Okay, and then yeah, if you're able to speak on this, but mm -hmm. after they get that information, they the person has to take action, right? I mean, they mm -hmm. have to take in what it's telling them and apply that, right? I mean, that's the goal with it? Right. Well, our, my, my intention is that the app does it for you. I, I always felt that if you come to me as a therapist, I should be the one to help you direct your, your psychology in a productive way. Um, you know, I, I, so the app does it it helps you in that manner. It creates the 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 scenario so that the impact it, it, there's there's a an, a neurological impact for you that will help take your mind down the the correct path. Um, that's part of the the system, part of the technology, because um, otherwise it would be a lot of work for for each person. So the you know, we we take on that work for you. And the app is learning about you all the time. Um, 
now with the incredible capacities of machine learning and AI. And so each time that you use it, 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 it knows more about you and it gives you better, uh, more tailored responses each time. The more you use it, uh, the better it is at giving you your the responses that are are very efficient to change your your state. Really, so the effort you put in is going to be put in more effort. You're going to get better results. Right. If you if you use it more um, and and you just go in it more. Um, it it's it won't be a, an effort uh, as such because it should be uh, it should be pleasant, right? Um, I'm I'm all about us living uh, living heaven on earth, <laughs> you know, not not having to be uh, uh, not being drained, not being exhausted, and so um, it's a pleasant process so that um it, it doesn't take away your your strength or energy from other things of life it's a very pleasant process but it it basically takes down your mind and downloads the content shows it to you and allows you to change what's in there and also to develop talents find people that are similar in the um psychologically to you um, and just really know yourself a lot better um, and and be able to come out of uncomfortable mental emotional states very very efficiently um, my grand objective with that app is that it's 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 so quick that um and so efficient that you really that's all you need that's all you need that it's a, a tool that will allow you to get out of the discomforts consistently and 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 uh very effectively so um it's it's ready for that we we've uh i i have just built the beta version and i'm now raising investment for the commercial one, which um, I bootstrapped all the way to to now. And, and uh, so I, go, I got to that uh, point of the entrepreneur where they call it the near-death experience. <laughs> you, you're almost about to eat your, I have a poodle I travel with. So the poor thing, you know, I, I, I have to save its life. Uh, so I have to raise investment, <laughs> so I don't eat the the, the poodle. No, I'm, I'm I'm kidding. But I I just uh, self funded the and and we had a very small pre seed um, uh, raise of capital, but now I'm doing a, a bigger one so that the app is as efficient as it has the capacity to be. Um, it it can do incredible things when you put things like face recognition, well, a, a lot of different um, capacities that, that our tech has now. So adding that on makes, makes it just be like, like a rocket. It's almost like the timing of it now too, where those technologies are there. Right. You know, face yeah. re recognition, AI, and who knows, I mean, even a year from now, what everything's going to be. So it's like an app like this, the timing's at the right time for this to be able to work to that capacity. Absolutely. It's amazing. Just what's happened with AI this year brought down the costs of this app substantially because before you had to build your own AI. And now with all the <laughs> All every all the explosion of AI, you can. It's very cheap to do that. So for sure, that that has been incredible. And big respect to you for funding the thing and getting it to where you've gotten. We talk a lot about entrepreneurship and <laughs> you know people that are just willing. They want to see that idea come to fruition. Um, so it sounds like your your whole life's work has led you to this moment, and you yes, believed in it. it you know to get it to this point. 
Right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that we're, we're all here for a specific reason. We, that's the beauty of teamwork. We all have different interests, different experiences, capacities, and uh, uh, it's, it's um, doing what you really um, enjoy, right? And, and, and is, is in itself, I think, is the way to, to live life well, right? Without um, getting ill. And, and it truly gives me a, a great sense of, of, of realization when, um, when I work with people and, and, and can see those changes. Because I, I believe that our world's problems are not about economy. Um, they're really about our psychology because we make bad decisions and um, governments make bad decisions, <laughs> people, presidents, people in charge of important things make bad decisions. Um, so, you know, they, they say that Hitler went to a therapist when he was a kid, but the parents didn't keep him in therapy, they only went once because the therapist was so expensive. So, you know, who knows how our history would be different if he would have stayed in therapy, right? Because all these, uh, just, uh, the, 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 the difficult and, and, and kind of, uh, dark situations of our world come from, um, emotions that are not well-managed, you know, when somebody is violent with somebody else and all that, it's it's a lack of of emotional and psychological balance. And it's um, there's a lot of of um, of drugs right now that um, you know it 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 doesn't it's not resolving the problem. I mean, we're in a in the time of our uh, history where there's never been as many pills for this kind of of situation as as we have now and and we've never had as many therapists as we have now and we're in the biggest mental health health crisis of history so that means something's not working and what's not working is that it's too expensive it's it's it, there's a limitation for the for an average person to to work on their mind and 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 they never learn how to do it on their own they're always dependent on somebody else so it, it makes people not do it and and unfortunately the the chemicals have terrible side effects that people don't want kidney problems liver problems ticks like tardive dyskinesia i mean they don't tell you that with you can get those kind of things um, when you're going on the the pill, or or uh, suicidal uh, thoughts, or even homicidal thoughts. You know, so with those kind of side effects, a lot of people are looking for alternatives, and um, so we want to provide that, and also to work in conjunction with other with psychiatry, with other uh, uh, therapies, because uh, there aren't any instruments to really in our uh, in our realm to to like doctors have, you know, doctors have an x-ray and they have blood tests, and we uh, therapists don't have any of that. So you know, everybody's a bit in the dark of what they're actually working with. So, so to work with something you can't see is very hard. So that would help a lot of other therapists in their own practice, right? Because they could they could look at their client's app and be like, okay, I see what's going on here. And even if the client couldn't decipher it as much, a licensed professional might be able to, oh, okay, I see what's right. happening. Yeah, no, I definitely, right. yeah. Right. So it's really going to be a tool for not just people, but for the professionals working with the people. Um, right, right. For that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, it, it, it's 
uh, there's wonderful professionals in this uh, area, you know, um, that are really trying to do everything possible to help their clients. And they don't have any way of seeing, measuring how what they're doing is, is really is impacting the person nowhere to track that. And um, so this would allow them to and, and make their job a lot easier. And also um, help to, you know, if somebody is medicated, e even for things like a backache, um, this can help not make that um, uh, prescription be so uh, strong because Sometimes you have a backache because you're just very tense or you're going through difficulty in life. And so muscles just become constricted. So if you are less tense, you won't need as much of the medication. And um, so, you know, um, it'll help with not getting those very severe side effects from medicine, but using it to as an aid, but uh, but also having another way of, of, of resolving things, an additional uh, route, so to, to help decrease the amount of, of, of medicine taken, because there's a lot of abuse right now in, in taking uh, opioids and all kinds of pain meds and, and, uh, and also, uh, psychopharmaceuticals because people, you know, our life is definitely not easy and, um, people want a relief understandably. So, um, they, they, they look to get that relief from a psychopharmaceutical, but when you take it for too long, it could, it can become addictive and then all kinds of um, short circuits are caused and people take those with alcohol and with other drugs and that's a recipe for disaster. You know. Do you have any theories to why the mental health uh, crisis has increased more and more? I do. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's it's interesting to see that um, depending on 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 the culture that we're in, that culture can can worsen or improve uh, the mental health crisis. And and there's cultures in countries, in cities, in neighborhoods, in families, in companies, in uh, within a relationship. And um, so in my opinion, um, it's, it is like when a coder that's creating an app creates programs uh, that app or, or writes code in a defective way, right? So our programs, the ways that we are, we're seeing life, our filters through which we're, we're seeing and understanding life are faulty. And those filters are passed down, sometimes by our family, sometimes by uh, figures of influence that we have around us, um, teachers or just people that we respect, and uh, sometimes we make our own. But, but they're faulty. Um, and, and so a lot, of, a lot of values have been lost um, in, in, the, in the search of productivity, for example, right? We're, we're very much in a, in a rat race all over the world trying to survive. And when we're trying to survive and stressed, we're in that fight or flight and we become obsessed at that one I thing. It's like when, when a lion chases you, you become obsessed of the lion so you can escape it. And we're, we're obsessed about making it, surviving and, and scared. And, um, and so that, that takes out other necessities that we have from our, our picture, like, like interconnectedness, um, like, like just um, 
the, the, the way that we manage time is very interesting. Um, we, we sometimes, we, we shoot down our, our basic needs because we have to make a certain schedule. So we are, we, 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 we would crash on a highway or we would run over <laughs> some, you know, uh, s- someone I'm, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm going to the extreme, but, but we, we just, um, are, are not taking care of ourselves because we're, we're so obsessed of, uh, certain results and, um, so we've lost a bit of the sense that animals have the wisdom that nature has that is uh, that 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 is 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 about us being one group that that uh when when we work together right we we work better <laughs> and uh and and when we work in 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 synchrony um things work out. So if somebody cancels an appointment, uh, it's not the end of the world. It, it, you can use that time to go to the gym or to spend time with your children or paint a painting or, um, uh, you know, if somebody, it, it, things can be much calmer than the way that we're, we're living. We're living in a constant race. And I, I think that's really hurting us. Uh, we've become very left-brained and I think we need more balance. It's, it's good. Structure is necessary and it's very good for uh, certain ordeals, but we also need to balance that with, um, with uh, allowing life to to be what it is, right? To to, we're not very realistic anymore um, because we're we're looking at our agendas and not at what we have in front of us, um, and and so I think we've we've just um, we we've we're giving too much. the The balance is not uh, is is not well. Um, we're giving way too much attention to certain things, so we we need to balance it out. Um, and um, and when we do, it's it's interesting, but we we go back into a, a state of health. Um, stress is 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 what is killing the body, and it's also making us. Uh, have bad decisions because when we've all felt a moment of high adrenaline and you know we've all said or done things that we didn't want to because it it makes us foolish right it 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 puts us in that state of having to kill the lion or the tiger either you know the fight or flight or paralyze um to not be eaten and and we do silly things so we need to get out of the fight or flight and if we got out of the fight or flight, a lot of the mental disorders would be relieved. Uh, for example, OCD, in my opinion, has a lot to do with fight or flight, and because it's we 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 become obsessed when we're anxious um, and trying to survive. You know, so when that dissipates the those obsessions lift also so um yeah i i think there's a lot of of things socially that we need to change and and taking advantage of that i i was um just going to mention that we have another system that's been created to relieve the tensions of society uh through entertainment um because you know, I I um, believe that we we spend a lot of time in technology, so the app is 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 wonderful. But we also need a rest from technology um, because we are on the computer, on the phone all the time. So there's another system that uh, that I've developed that's called uh, conductual arts, and this system um, 
we we use it in mass events so that um, we create these immersive experiences for the public and that actually reconfigure the mind, optimize the mind by just being there and feeling good emotions and seeing what's going on in the event. So the people that go will leave, uh, it can be a concert or any form of art, will leave that performance um, feeling better. And, and, and we actually um, choose topics. For example, one could be if people have a fear of flying, they'll go to an hour of this performance and leave, and they will overcome that fear. They will have overcome the fear of flying just from being in this artistic performance. Because I use all the techniques, psychological techniques, through the art forms to, uh, to, to create these imprints in, in the neurology of our, our public. So we're also doing that, um, and and um, we're we're doing it in different countries right now. So uh, you'll you'll see some of those events coming up soon in LA um, that you can just go to and enjoy and uh, and leave and and just it's like a therapy. But it's. Uh, it's an entertainment moment. So because entertainment is so important, talking about what happened to my dad with the, the tango, uh, being in those uh, states of, of uh, enjoyment are very, very important for our lives. And, and that's another thing we don't have as a society. We, we're um, very serious. We've become incredibly overly focused on 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 results and we've lost this entertainment side um, or it's linked sometimes to alcohol or drugs or um, so we're we're using it to uh, to create health for the masses. So that's another part another area of of our company. So we're doing the tech, the art performances, and um, trainings and therapies that uh, that use this way of impacting the the group uh, and and changing their mind without effort. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 well, I love that you that you like that. Well, I mean, you know, we're both involved in the arts, and like I know for me personally, and I don't know if this relates exactly to what you're saying, but like when you listen to certain music, you can be in a certain mood, maybe kind of down a little bit or more in the negative space, but then you put on a certain song and like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. You know, oh, it's it kind of like that a little bit. Like, oh, you it's know? exactly yeah. like that yeah. because it, you know, I, I used to be in a therapeutic session trying to get to an emotion with my client and I'd be talking and talking and a long time was had to be taken for the person to feel that. And then I started working with musicians. And for instance, I work with one in Spain um, who her voice is so powerful that after like three seconds of her singing, the person's in that state, right? They're, they're in a really heightened state. So we bypass all those like um, shells you know, the mind opens up uh, immediately with sound and with different forms of performance. Um, so the the arts are so healthy. Um, so, you know, we've forgotten the Greeks made art theater as a therapeutic method. And it was so that the public would um, project their states onto the actors and be able to have a catharsis through the actor because it was too uh, threatening to do it without the projection. So um, the way this happened is I had students from the Amazon jungle from um, native tribes in Ecuador that would come to learn hypnosis and NLP, but some of them had never learned to write to read or write. 
So I had to find a way to give them the information and have them understand it and be able to do the therapeutic uh, procedures without learning it in the normal academic way. And through the arts, those imprints were created and they learned uh, in, in a very enjoyable, easy way. Um, and so I started doing it in all of our trainings so people, you know, didn't know what was going on in the beginning. They were a little lost. They were like, why do we have an opera singer when we came to learn hypnosis? And then they realized that that was sealing an idea in their mind that would, wouldn't get erased. And that then they had it uh, available to them at any moment. It's like when you... You've had a special moment and, 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 and it's been linked to a song or a perfume, right? Or, or a piece, some clothing, and then you smell that perfume and it brings back the memory. Or you hear the song and it puts you in that state. So that's kind of what is, is done. So yeah, the arts, um, I, I use it as a prescription. <laughs> I think that, you know, we, we should uh, have a form of entertainment all the time because it, it, it relaxes us. It's like meditation. Mm -hmm. so, um, so a big part of mentality is about entertainment. And we're working with some great artists um, from all over the world um, to they have that magic, right? To be able to, to reach a person's heart. And um, that plus all this technology just creates a perfect storm for wellness. It's amazing, it's your time. <laughs> <laughs> it, what did you say? I said, it's your time. Oh, Everything's oh. led you to this moment, like, you know, and all the technology and the things you're putting together. And Eric, do you have anything, a question? Yeah, I'm, I got a million questions. I wish we had more time. <laughs> um, I do generally agree with your philosophy and all this. Like I have someone really close to me who somatized a pretty ongoing illness where his mm -hmm. life is very difficult. And I do think it's a coping mechanism of something that something traumatic that happened to him when he was younger and he just hasn't been able to deal with it. So it's just constantly having this thing. Um, question. So you work with a lot of people with multiple personality disorders. Have you, had, have you ever had a case where when they are in one personality, like something like their eye color changes or anything like that? Have you ever seen that? I've heard of stories of that. I was just curious if you've came across anything like that. Well, I've, I've never seen eye color, okay. no. But what I have seen is that their posture changes yeah. completely. Yeah, no, I, I've never seen eye color, but I was going to say, if you see me, I'm always slanted to one side when I talk. And for instance, NLP tells you that people that slant their heads are very auditory. They put a lot of attention in sound. And people that, that talk, this chair moves, but people that talk like at the border of the chair and lift their heads and talk very, very quickly are more visual. I don't talk as quick. I talk slower and with my head slanted and others that look down are more kinesthetic. So what, what I see with people is that when they change personality, their whole physiology, like the posture will change. So someone that usually talks like this and very quiet might lift their head and just the whole body language changes completely from one personality to another. I, I've never seen a difference in color of the eyes. But I have seen in the lubrication of eyes. So for instance, my dog has dry eye and people have dry eye. And, you know, eyes do get dried with stress. You know, when you're angry or when you're stressed, you lubricate a lot less. When you're in love, uh, or you're inspired, right? When you see like a beautiful landscape, your eyes relax and the lubrication's different. So I do believe body um, states, body language will definitely 
affect our health. Um, we can become tense or relaxed, or and that that creates different chemicals within and and proteins and neurotransmitters. Yeah, I agree with all so that, hundred percent. Definitely, the body's changing, and 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 there's now ways biofeedback devices that can measure that. Yeah, but the color I haven't seen change. No. That's okay, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, I was curious. But no, I definitely, I agree with all that. Like, it's very fascinating. Um, yeah, makes you wonder if anyone's actually their, their, real, their real self or like, you know, what does that even mean? Like, your uninhibited self, what would that look like? Would all of our postures be different? Like you see it when people are drunk, they'll be kind of different when they're like normally mm -hmm. closed off. Or we've had people on this show who just being able to talk for a while, they just kind of open up like a little kid, they become different. And then like, right when we turn the cameras off, they kind of put their shell back on and like walk out the door. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. just all, and that's just a smaller scale of this, but yeah, I'm incredibly fascinated by all this. So Cool. Well, <laughs> Thank that, you for sharing. Well, it. That, that's uh, that's a you know awesome um, and and a great uh, observation. I I mean I wonder how many ch changes occur, and uh, it's something that should be studied more thoroughly. I right? think it's it's coming, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you're kind of you're you're part of that wave. So yeah, it's coming, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I was going to say something, it just left my mind. Hold on. Uh, oh, that, um, you know, in, in schizophrenia, that happens also, not just in um, multiple personalities, but, but people with a psychotic episode, they're hallucinating and they think they're somewhere else or there's somebody else there, right? And, and so those things occur also a lot with, um, with schizophrenia. And what, what you said, like, I wonder where we get all that programming. You know, a lot of things are, are conditioned when we're young, like, I don't know, the class clown maybe made one joke one day and, 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 and the laughter of people around him is a positive feedback and it's like a positive conditioning. It's a reward. So he starts telling more jokes and becomes better at it because he practices, right? And then, so our personalities are very much built also on, on, on the responses of people around us. I agree. Some people let us be funny, some don't, right? Some people let people be very free, others you know they they're very threatened by uh, by a person's opinion. So if 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 a family's threatened by a child's opinion, that child will be less expressive, right? And and so we are very much shaped by what uh, surrounds us. We we're we're not just uh, a genetic a, a product of our of our genes, but of course that, that the whole nature, nurture, yeah, nature, 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 yeah. But it's also fascinating that twins that are separated and go and live in different households, countries with a different economic capacity and they can, uh, many times they dress similarly, they have the same kind of taste. So genes are also so strong. Uh, and, and many philosophies and religions talked about how whatever our parents and, and grandparents did is passed on through the, the generations. And it makes all the sense because, um, you know, mice are born with fear of cats for survival. So <laughs> we are born with a lot of the fears and issues that our ancestors had. Sometimes it's not even from our own lives. So it's very interesting. Our app even measures that because sometimes it can be an anxiety that your great grandmother had and it, you just got it just like you got curly hair from an ancestor, right? So um, we're also a product of that. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, not even all ours, right? That's why babies already have, they, they already have this primal way of being. Some are quieter, some are louder, you know?
some aren't scared of anything, others are scared of everything. So yeah, we're, we already come with a certain chip also, which is very interesting. Yeah, and this conversation has just been a great reminder of, I mean, your mind is a muscle and it's a muscle. I think it's so easy that, first of all, a lot of people don't even tell you to really work it, but you have to really train yourself to work it. So this has been fascinating. I wish we had a lot more time. <laughs> so oh, we'll have to we do will, a part we two. Will. We uh, must. But yeah. I, think we, I think this is a great intro to this world. Is there anything else as we close out that you would want to say? Oh, uh, uh, no, I just, just uh, thank you so much, Sam, uh, Sam and Eric, um, for this time and opportunity um, just to talk about something so important um, that I, I, I do believe th that is is a bit undermined still what you said how just how important the mind is it it's so important for doctors to realize that it's the mind is also part of health that it cannot be disconnected from from a person's health and uh, teachers how important it is for learning and you know so um so so, so to be able to bring that um uh, emphasis and 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 uh, just give it that space is 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 so important. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to talk a little bit about that because we 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 definitely need to give the mind more time, and our health and world will be working a lot better. Absolutely. And if people want to get a hold of you or uh, go to a website, uh, where can people go to learn more about this or get a hold of you? So they can go to our website, um, mentality.io. Um, and there they'll, they'll find all the links to LinkedIn and, and, and all the rest, social media. So, um, and also, um, they can, uh, contact. I, I believe you have this on LinkedIn, also your your podcasts, right? Oh yes, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna post this everywhere. <laughs> okay, awesome. I mean, um, look for me there, Carolina Sevilla, and uh, I would love to to hear from. And and the email is Carolina Sevilla at mentality .io. So email me with any questions and I'll be happy to respond. I, I'm one of those uh, founders that uh, never think there's not no time for our clients. I'll always respond personally to everybody writing to us, no matter how, how long it takes. But I will, I will always be the one responding if they write to me personally. I love that. And we'll we'll make sure to put the website and your contact info in the description on YouTube, on Spotify, all that. So be prepared. There might be some people <laughs> coming. <you>. In. <laughs> some wonderful. But thank you so much, Eric. Any last words? No, speaking thank of you. YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please subscribe to this wonderful channel. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's a gift to have met you. I really look forward to doing this. Again, we can do a three, four hour podcast on this. I wish we had more time, but thank you, Sam. Th that's why we save it for next time. I we always will. give the guests the last word. What would you like to leave us with? Well, uh it's just gratitude, really. Thank you for doing this and, and creating a space um, to be able to spread information like this. Sam, it's wonderful what you're doing. So just thank you and, uh, and keep on with the amazing work. And I hope we do have a lot more uh, opportunities to keep delving into this uh, topic. Oh yeah, there and will be. <laughs> will be. We're we're always traveling. We're in different areas, but now with tech, we can always be connected. So, uh, or maybe you'll travel with Eric that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that Spain, be, right? We're next one is Spain, then Ecuador, then we'll be back in LA. We're always all over the globe. 
Okay, now I'm looking forward to it. So Carolina, thank you so thank much. You. This was incredible. Thank you so much. And thank you, best of luck with everything moving forward. Thank you. And thank you, Eric, for everything. everyone, Sam Dever of the Sam Dever Podcast here, and I just want to thank you for checking out this episode. To watch and listen to future episodes, be sure to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at the Sam Dever Podcast. Thank you so much. See you soon.